looking for a fright Then watch Corpses Cheap Chillers every Saturday night Corpses, oh yeah, cheap yeah, chillers Corpses, oh yeah, cheap yeah, chillers Camp comedy cartoons and bad dreams Found footage and psycho screams All of this and more will fill your screens Corpses, oh yeah, cheap, yeah, chillers, oh yeah, chillers, ghosts, skeletons, dolls, and killers, you'll find them all here on Corpses, cheap, chillers, corpses, oh yeah, cheap, yeah, chillers, corpses, oh yeah, cheap, yeah, chillers. Well, hey there, all you cool ghouls and goblins. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Corpsey. We've got eight cheap chillers to play for you tonight. Tales of mystery, horror, and even... Suspense. These eight micro-budget indie horror shorts are so frightening, they might just scare you to death. <laughs> But seriously, I do have to start saying that now, just in case you actually die of fright, uh, in which case you cannot sue me. <laughs> Please stop suing me. Anyway, before we begin, a word from our sponsors, those fine, fine people who keep the lights on. I'm Dr. Gregory Mechanic. And I'm Lucille Riley, Esquire. We're here to announce Lake, Lake Peaceful, Peaceful Campground, Campground and Resort. Resort. Grand reopening. Grand reopening after five years. That's right. Brand new name and everything's fine now. Forget everything you think you know about Lake Death. Take a walk on the beach and feel that sand underneath your feet. Look at those beautiful ducklings. I had duck for dinner last night. It's literally been 35 years since the first massacre. And five years since that last one. Look, animals are happy here. You're going to want to keep a dog around because they can sense danger. Ooh. I like drinking coffee on the beach. Mmm. Sand in your coffee? Not on my watch. Not today. Not ever. There's hiking, cycling, canoeing. So much fun. So much fun! When the fog rolls in, you'll need to take that as a warning and stay inside. Ah, I like warnings. Do not trespass near that old creepy cabin. Do, Do not trespass, trespass by, by the, the creepy, creepy old cabin. cabin. The funny thing about cold cases, a lot of people think they're cool. Also, they're sailing. Our instructors are top notch. One's from Italy. Nico's very popular. Ooh. When you're out sailing, you may see a lighthouse. Stay away from that lighthouse. For the love of God, stay away from the old lighthouse. It looks nice in pictures, but stay away from the lighthouse. I'm telling you. Please note the county requires all guests to fill out a liability waiver before stepping foot on the campground. It's the quick and fun type of paperwork. Filling out paperwork's my favorite thing. Remember our prenup? Mm, yeah. Thank God for that. Nico. Nico is very popular. Located the first left after the old gas station that's been untouched by time. Lake, Lake Peaceful, peaceful Resort. Lake Peaceful. Calvin County. Calvin County. Calvin County. Calvin County. Calvin County. Calvin County. We love Calvin County. Lake Peaceful in Calvin County on the left from the gas station in Calvin County. Lake Peaceful Campground and Resort. The questions he had were universal ones. What happens after death? Will I become a burden to my family? Where are my reading glasses? Death's a real hassle, but it doesn't always have to be. Here at the Gentle Ghoul's Warehouse, we take the hassle out of death. Our various caskets are priced to meet your needs. 
You'll find our excellent corpse homes come in bronze, copper, stainless steel, mahogany, walnut, cherry, maple, oak, pecan, poplar, and pine. The Gentle Ghouls Warehouse. You're gonna like the way you're buried. I guarantee it. I want to tell you a story. Oh boy. This is about two best friends who never realized they loved each other until it was too late. Grandpa, is this a scary story? Yes. When the girl went missing, the boy was lost. Where did the girl go? Hunting for a legend. And so the boy went in search for her. What's the legend? They say a creature from the other side waits outside the city, eager to be invited in. Did the boy find the creature? Oh yes, he was tricked. What happened? The boy invited the creature in. for five strangers modeling for a school brochure. Well, was it a diverse group, Grandpa? Of course. There was the closet case who loved his best friend. Well, I hope it didn't cause him emotional turmoil. Love is love. The creature set its sights on them all that night. The shy girl, the nerd, the musician, and finally, the ballerina. Was she going through some problems too, Grandpa? No one remembered her birthday. Oh, that's gonna make me cry. You should. This is a goddamn tragedy after all. I haven't even gotten to the casual incest. Well, I don't think this is appropriate for me. There's no way to tell. No governing bodies ever rated this story. Is there a way to track the, the creature? He carries a long machete. Well, I don't know what a machete is. It's a symbol for a penis. Does the, does the creature have a very large penis, Grandpa? Yes. Well, where's my m mom and dad? They're having movie night. They're watching... Scream 3. Well, that's an, that's an underrated sequel, I, in, in my opinion. I can't get past Courtney Cox's bangs. Can we double back to that incest comment? All in due time. Also, there's a ghost. Well, what do you call this spooky story? For crying out loud. Well, Grandpa, what happens if the creature comes for me? You die. Ah, Lake Peaceful. So many great memories. Although I preferred it before they gentrified it and cleaned up all the bloodstains. You know, that used to be a really rough neighborhood, but the murder rates went way down after I moved out. Uh, that's unrelated though. Uh, <clears throat> Our first short tonight is called Missing Presence, which examines a young couple's texting habits.
Hey, coming over tonight? Oh, I wish. Sorry, but I need to grade these papers. Ooh. No, I understand. I'm working in my classroom so I can focus. School's a little eerie, empty like this. Am I a huge nerd for thinking your dedication to your students is a huge turn on? Yes, I approve. Well, I'm planning on binging Netflix with Chinese takeout, so feel free to come over if you want to. I want to. Just should be an adult and get some work done. It's cool, babe. What are your little geniuses writing about? They almost mutinied about having homework over break, so I let them write about their breaks instead of Victorian lit. You are too easy on them. Virginia Woolf's rolling in her grave. They're good kids. Mostly. <laughs> How's their writing? So far, decent. I'm only halfway through, though. Most exciting so far? This one boy is obsessed with roller coasters. He's part of an international club. I know, right? So he dragged his whole family to Six Flags, and he tediously ranked everything. And now I'm thinking we need to hit up Six Flags to see how he did. Maybe. Okay, I gotta focus, handsome. I'll let you know when I'm done. If you're still Netflixing and Chineseing, maybe I'll drop by. Sounds good, beautiful. Talk to you soon. Ben? Shelly? Still reading brilliant writing? I just read something really disturbing. Like what? Like, I don't even know. Shell, I'm sure one of your kids is just fucking with you. You didn't read it. Though yeah, I mean, maybe he didn't understand it's not supposed to be fictional. It's supposed to be how they're really spending their break. What did he write? Send it to me. I can't really share it. Shells, come on, it's me. We have, like, boyfriend-girlfriend anonymity or whatever. Not sure that's a thing, but okay. So? I'll send you what he wrote. Cool. It's not cool. Just read it and tell me what you think. Yeah, sure, babe. What's this student's deal anyways? Um, Cameron is... unique. That's code for fucked up. It's not. File screenshot 102.jpg received. This is Cameron. He's a good kid. Quiet. Sort of the alternative type. So totally bullied. Eh, more avoided. That's what the kids do now. They shun you. File winter break assignment. Cam.doc received. Just got it. Reading now. How I'm spending my winter break. My body feels tired, but there's no way I can sleep now, even though I've been up all night. I just remembered this assignment, so maybe it'll help process what happened if I write while it's fresh. That sounds lame, but I don't know what else to do. The break was fine, at first. My parents gave themselves cruise tickets for Christmas. They know it's not my scene. They got me new headphones. I guess that was for them too, so they don't have to hear me blasting music in my room anymore. It's been a quiet break. Lonely, I guess. Not that I have a ton of friends, but they've been busy and I don't have a girlfriend. I've been working to save up some cash so I can ask this one girl out. Her name's Lisa and she goes to a different school. Our moms are in the same book club and I'd like to impress her. She's not a gold digger or anything, but I want to take her to the movies and a nice dinner. And hopefully she'll want to go out some more and I'll have the extra income so we won't have to slum it by going on a fast food tour. And if Lisa turns me down, I'll just save for a new car. I got a cleaning job since there's not much a 16 year old can do at night. The job's easy enough. I drive to the boss's house in my clunker, grab the cleaning van and make the rounds. It's mostly offices and banks that don't want anyone vacuuming or whatever during business hours. I've only been working a month, but I got the rounds down. Friday nights I finish with this office complex on Allington Loak Street. It's a squat building that rents out space to lawyers, accountants and this small company that makes prosthetic limbs. Last night, I microwaved a TV dinner and then got on the clock. It started snowing when I picked up the van and headed to that office building. I just hoped the roads wouldn't ice over while I was working. I parked, the only vehicle in the lot, unlocked the entrance and pushed my cleaning cart inside. It needs some oil or something, because one of the wheels squeaks. I slipped my new wireless headphones on and emptied the trash cans in the lobby. There's not much besides the lobby and restrooms on the first floor, so I got vacuuming pretty soon. As I finished the first floor, my music stopped. I checked my headphones, thinking my parents gave me a cheap pair, but that wasn't it. After a minute, I realized my phone was dead, so I lowered the headphones and resigned myself to a silent night's work. 
just my thoughts and a squeaking cart. I grew up watching horror movies, so I don't scare easy, but it can get eerie working alone at night in an office building without any distractions. There's so many hallways and rooms that are supposed to have people inside them. Being alone in an office is like coming across a pair of shoes in the middle of the highway. It's just wrong. Who's to say some psycho didn't hide in the bathroom until after closing? Who's to say I was only imagining the feeling of eyes on my back? The elevator was freezing for some reason, and the second floor wasn't much warmer. I kicked myself for not smoking a joint before starting. It would have slowed me down a ton, but I might have been able to giggle through it. Or been twice as paranoid. Roll of the dice, right? After I pushed the cart out of the elevator, I spotted a light on over one of the cubicles. These were the law offices, and I didn't think any of the lawyers worked that late, especially on a Friday night. Hello, I called out. It's just the cleaners. I pluralized it in case I'd interrupted a break-in or something sketchy. I didn't need to interrupt some middle-aged office hookup. There was no reply, so I figured someone had just left the light on, so I did my usual circuit around the floor. Ten minutes passed before I got to the cubicles and found a dude guzzling coffee and typing like a madman. He didn't look much older than me, with a five o'clock shadow on his face and a suit one size too large. He jumped when I approached his Whoa. cubicle, and I felt like a jerk for no reason. Sorry, I said. It's fine. I, I, I didn't hear you. You didn't hear the vacuum? Tunnel vision? He shrugged, his right foot tapping the floor like a woodpecker. You want some coffee? Sure. He stepped around me into the small coffee cart nearby. I I'm an intern. Low man on the totem pole. Yeah, the partners, you know, they left, left me with this mountain of grunt work to do before I can go home. I just hope the, the, the building doesn't lose power. Aren't you cold working here all night? Not with, not with coffee. I emptied the trash receptacle under his cubicle, and then he handed me a lukewarm mug. He must have made it some time ago. I sipped the coffee and watched the intern down his and pour himself another cup. Well, thanks then. Good luck getting home before too late. He <sighs> sighed heavily. Sometimes it feels like, um, like I'm stuck here for good. I carried my coffee to the small kitchen, washed out the mug, and pushed the cleaning cart back to the elevator. It was nice to know I wasn't alone in the building, even though the only other person was a stressed out intern with a Java addiction. The third floor housed a prosthetic limb company and vacant office spaces. There was no need to clean the unused space, and whoever ran the limbs place took care of cleaning themselves. That only left the lobby to clean. The thing about that lobby is all those amputee posters. It's the first thing you see when you step off the elevator. Men and women, children and the elderly, all missing limbs. They're smiling as men in lab coats affix shiny plastic to their stumps. It makes my own joints itch. A few years ago, I found my cousin tearing arms off her dolls. I could just imagine my own shoulders popping out of their sockets and my arms falling to the floor just like that. Once I hurried through there, it was back in the elevator and up to the fourth floor, where accountants crunched numbers and salespeople hogged goods during the day. That's where I found someone in the dark, and I felt this cold tingle up the back of my neck. But then I relaxed when I realized there was no danger. It was just this dude who looked a little younger than me spinning in an office chair. He saw me and stopped, then jumped up. He was tall, at least six feet, with a gap to smile that made him look like a stretched out kid. He wore this lightweight jacket that said Turner on the back and some sweatpants. I pegged him for a basketball player and wondered what the hell he was doing there. Something wrong? Hope not. I'm the cleaner. What are you doing here? I'm waiting for my ride. Okay then, I said, hoping he wouldn't ask me for a lift. Well, I'll just be cleaning and then be on my way. He shrugged and plopped back down, then resumed his board spinning. It was even colder up there, and I hated being watched while I worked. It felt like I was some servant or something. I hurried through the floor, doing an admittedly subpar job of it so I could get out of there faster. On my way back to my cart for the vacuum, I noticed the office chair was still spinning, but the tall kid was gone. I felt drawn to the chair, so I walked down the hallway, looking into each office for the kid. The chair stopped with a jerk, like someone had grabbed it. A light flickered in the back corner office. He was there. He unzipped his jacket and let it fall to the floor while he kicked off his shoes. He lifted his t-shirt over his head and then pulled off each sock. He was gangly, all skin and bones, and there was a big pink birthmark on his shoulder. I was just stunned. Was he on drugs? Or maybe he was supposed to be and he hadn't taken them? His sweatpants came off next, and all he had underneath were swim briefs. I was wrong about him being a basketball player. Definitely a swimmer. My feet had carried me toward that office as I watched the kid strip under the flickering light through the glass wall. 
His eyes weren't drooping, and he wasn't stumbling around. It was like he was sleepwalking wide awake. He strode to the window and heaved it open. He had to be on drugs if he had to strip to cool off in that cold office. Snowflakes blew inside, but he didn't react. He took one step away and rolled his head around. He threw his arms behind his back and stretched. I tried the office door, but it wouldn't open. The kid lifted one knee to his chest, and then the other. He pushed his lower back out, cracking it, and then he rolled his shoulders up and down. He ignored me as I tried the door again, and called out to him. He ignored me while he poised for action, and then leapt toward the window. He ignored me as he dove through it just like he was jumping off a diving board. My stomach rolled over, and a cold flash rocked my body. We were four floors up. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't even call 911 since my phone died. I remembered the law intern and ran to the elevator, but the doors wouldn't open. I took the stairs two at a time until I came out on the second floor. I couldn't get the image of that kid diving through the window out of my mind. He just killed himself. Just like that. Right in front of me. I was shaking so bad I tripped over my own feet while I raced to the intern's cubicle by the coffee cart. But the dude was gone. His oversized suit and tie were folded and placed neatly in his chair, and the cubicle was covered in a thick layer of dust. That was impossible. I just tidied it 20 minutes before, and what were his clothes even doing there? My mind went blank, and I fled on instinct. I pumped my arms and legs, and didn't slow down until I left the building, and breathed in the crisp air. As much as I wanted to drive away, I knew I had to check on the kid. I walked around the side of the building, my feet crunching the snow while I prepared myself to find a splattered body. There was nothing out of the ordinary on the side of the place. I stepped back and craned my neck and spotted the corner office he'd jumped from. The window was still open, but there was no sign that anyone had been in the alley before me. Just a layer of undisturbed snow. I didn't finish the job. I didn't even retrieve the cleaning cart and vacuum. I just returned to the van and drove straight back to my empty house. I'd been shaking. And then I realized there were tears in my eyes. I don't know what's wrong with me. I couldn't have imagined it. I know I didn't. I spoke to two people in that building, and then I watched one of them commit suicide. I know it happened. I know it. So, Miss McKinnon, this is how I'm spending my winter break. I'm sitting in my bedroom, and all the lights are on in the house, and I'm all alone, and the snow's still falling, and I'm wrapped in a blanket, and... My body is tired and nauseous, and I can't even imagine feeding it or sleeping. Our house phone just rang, and the caller ID said it was me. I must have left my dead phone in the cleaning cart up on the fourth floor of that building. I haven't answered it yet. I really don't want to. It keeps ringing, and I'm so, so cold. Um, wow, yeah. It's definitely creepy. What do you think? I don't know, babe. Is Cameron a pathological liar or something? Not at all. He's one of my best students. Is he on meds? No clue. I got his emergency contact info and tried both parents. Straight to voicemail. Shitty. At least you'll see the kid Monday. I don't know if I can wait that long. I just have this really bad feeling. Please don't freak yourself out over this. Can't help it. Why won't his parents answer? Baby, why don't you come over here and relax? There's nothing you can do. Still there? Oh god. I know who that swimmer is. What? The tall kid Cameron met. I googled him. There's a missing persons post on Reddit. I'm going to Cam's house. I'll let you know what happens. Wait, don't do anything just yet. Maybe call the cops? I'm sorry, I can't reply right now. I'm driving. Fuck! Just be safe. I'll see if I can find any more info on that tall kid. I love you. I'm sorry, I can't reply right now. I'm driving. Franklin police are requesting the assistance of the public in locating a missing 15-year-old male. Sebastian Turner was last seen by friends on December 29, 2017 at approximately 9 p.m. Sebastian was last seen at the community center at 850 Elmwood Avenue. Family are concerned for his safety. Sebastian is described as 6 feet tall, 160 pounds, 
brown hair, blue eyes, birthmark on right shoulder, wearing a yellow and black high school swim team jacket and gray sweatpants. If you have any information on Sebastian's whereabouts, contact Franklin Police Department immediately. So Sam, I swam against Sebastian last year. Super nice guy. Drugs or a secret girlfriend perhaps? Boyfriend? Other? Updates? Doesn't sound like he ran away and dude is tall even for an adult, so it's not like some rando grabbed him. Maybe a prank gone wrong? Spontaneous combustion. Yo. Solved. Yo welcome. Sending my thoughts and prayers. Wow, my heart really goes out to the people affected by this article. That reminds me of my aunt. She makes $2,500 a month working from home. Follow this link and find out how. Statistically, if they don't turn up in 24 hours, they never will. Uh, at least, not alive. Uh, <laughs> just saying. Thoughts and prayers. Not much to update. Franklin Chronicler spoke with police and Sebastian's parents. No leads, but they're still hopeful. I mean, somebody out there knows something. They just have to, right? Sebastian, Sebastian is fine, fine now. now. What the fuck? No, no need, need to worry. worry. Um, the kid's still missing. That kind of worries me still. He cute and all, but he needs a bucket of concealer and that shoulder. You know, if he's still alive. We, we are, are all happy here. here. This thread is now locked. I'm here. At least, I think it's Cam's house. What's going on? Is he there? Is he okay? No one's home. No cars, no lights. It's Friday night family dinner, maybe? Come over here. I'm getting worried. There's plenty of Chinese still. Ch Shelly? Sorry, I just talked with Cam's neighbor. Turns out his parents are on a cruise, so that part really is true. That doesn't mean it all is, but it is unsettling. I know. Did you get any more intel on Sebastian? I found another Reddit post, but I'd prefer you come over here and I'll show it to you. It's not great. I'm a big girl. I know, still... Hey, Cam wrote that he cleans that building every week, right? I think so. Why? That was last Friday night. It's almost nine. He should be there right now. Babe, I don't think that's a great idea. I'm pretty sure I know which building he's talking about. It's not far from here. Why don't you come over here first? We can check it out together. I'm sorry, I can't reply right now. I'm driving. Today marks the six month anniversary since Sebastian Turner disappeared after swimming with some friends at his local community center. The center closes at 10 p.m. and Sebastian's friends plan on staying until then, but he was done by nine. He dried off, got dressed, and told his friends he would wait for his ride outside. That was roughly 9, 10 p.m. A local woman arrived to pick up her daughter from a chess lesson and reported that she didn't see anyone outside the community center, especially not Sebastian. That was roughly 9.25 p.m. But that's not the end of the story. There's a reason I'm posting this in the spooky mystery sub. One week after Sebastian vanished, a mannequin was discovered in the community center shortly before closing. It was found in the locker room and looks like Sebastian. It is six foot with similar facial features and a wig that nearly matches his hair. There's even a birthmark on its shoulder, just like Sebastian's. Forensics were run on the mannequin. It came back with nothing. No fingerprints or DNA. It's a perfectly normal plastic doll with posable joints. Even more unsettling, the doll was dressed in Sebastian's shirt, jacket, swim briefs, sweatpants, socks, and shoes. On the day the replica was found, which was just seven days after Sebastian vanished, his parents discovered a note in their mailbox. The letters had been cut out of magazines and were pasted together like a ransom note. It reads, thank you for the present. I made one in return. That's some sketch Zodiac style taunting shit. Messed up. I bet some sicko creep ate him that night. Sebastian, Sebastian is fine, fine now. now. Kid's dead. Sucks they probably won't find his body. Family deserves that at least. No, no need, need to worry. worry. What is your deal? You need to stop trolling these threads. We, we are, are all happy, happy here. here. This thread is now locked. Okay, so this is the right place. Building is dark, but Cameron's cleaning van is here. Great, so you feel better? No, I need to speak to him. 
Should I just wait for him or what? I think you should leave. The more I read about this, the worse it gets. If Cam's in trouble, I have to help him. Looks like the van's been here for hours. There's a layer of snow covering it. It's not snowing tonight. I don't like this. I'm just going to knock and see if anyone answers. Baby, it's an office complex. I'm sure it's locked tight. The front door was open. I'm inside now. Be careful. I'm fine. It's cold in here. They must not heat it at night. Yeah, I'm just going to check out each floor real quick. Fine, but please hurry. The second floor is law offices, just like in Cameron's story. No sign of him yet, but I'm sure he's here. I can smell his coffee. Third floor is the prosthetics workshop. It's locked up. Good, then he's got to be on four. Wow, this is so weird. You're never going to believe it. What? You found him and he admitted he made it up? Nope, but I think you're close. I got up here and I thought I saw someone, so I chased after him. This is supposedly the room the swimmer jumped out the window from. And? Well, Cameron's nowhere. But there's this incredible mannequin that looks just like him. It's uncanny. He even put the headphones and eyeliner on it. Stop joking around. I'm serious. Look. JPEG received. Shelly, run. You're being silly. It's obviously a prank. Just get out of there. And now I can hear someone walking around in the hall. The little brat. Lock the door. Pull a fire alarm. Anything. Shelly? Can you answer me? I'm really worrying, baby. Please answer me. Let me know you're okay. Shelly is fine now. Baby, you're really scaring me. No need to worry. Tell me you're okay! We are all happy here. What? Thank you for the present. I will make you one in return. This isn't funny, baby. Message failed to deliver. I'm calling you if you don't answer. I'm, I'm calling 911. Message failed to deliver. I'm sorry. This number is disconnected or is no longer in service. Or is no longer in service. Or is no longer in service. Franklin 911, what's your emergency? My girlfriend, she's in trouble. I don't know what's wrong exactly, but it has something to do with this. Sir, is your girlfriend with you now? No, no, we were just texting and she went to this office complex. Sir, what is the current location of your girlfriend? I don't know. Somewhere on, it's on, um, on, uh, Allington Loak Street. That's it. And where are you, Ben? I'm at home. Why are you concerned about her? <sighs> She's a teacher, and one of her students might be in danger. I'm worried now that she's in trouble. There is no need to worry. I can't get through to her, and- Kelly, it's fine now. And her student could be hurt or something. Cameron, it's fine now. What did you just say? We are all happy here. Oh, God. You know, that movie reminded me. I need to text my girlfriend right now. Hey, beautiful. Are you a ghost? Because you've been haunting my dreams. <laughs> Good, right? I bet this time she'll finally reply. She hasn't answered my last 30 texts, but uh, you know, I understand. She's got her hands tied. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have tied them so tight, though.
Hmm. Oh well, next up is Manners, a little movie about a babysitter battling allergies. Bless you. Oh, thank you. Coming down with something. Nah, just allergies. You know, when Terry called and said she was taking the two kids to the funeral, I didn't even think about the fact that she had two cats before I agreed to house it. How are Charles and Mambo? You know, I haven't seen them since I got here. I think they're hiding. You're so great for looking after Terry's place like this on zero notice. Yeah, you got all the house sitting. It's like a vacation, you get to judge how your friends live. I just kind of wish it was under better circumstances, you know? I knew Terry's brother. I mean, he was a solid dude. I just can't believe he actually got murdered. Did you hear any of the grisly details? I heard it was like a home invasion. Some sort of robbery that went real bad. That's true. But there's even more. I know I shouldn't, but I gotta ask. The killer left a message in Terry's brother's blood. Oh fuck. It was smeared on the wall. What'd it say? Sorry for the mess. Ugh. That is some fucked up creepy shit. But, I mean, if you're gonna have a home invader come in and murder you, at least they're polite about it. You are sick. That, sir, I am. And that's why I'm gonna go take some antihistamines and go to bed. I'll let you know if I hear anything else. See ya. Right, sounds good. I'll talk to you later. Doors locked, cats are fed, pizza's gone. It's like bedtime for me. God bless you. Whoa. Oh no, no. Oh god, god no. Who are you? Oh my god! 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 Oh my
Wow, these movies sure are getting good, huh? Oh, but this popcorn could really use some more blood butter. <laughs> there we go. Mmm. Ugh, gross. This blood is type O negative. Damn it, Jerry, I told you to stop buying me all the healthy shit. Mm. Sorry about that, folks. Things with me and my producer Jerry are a little bit mm, tense ever since he found out that I've been sleeping with his ex-wife. <laughs> well, you know, Jerry, your vow said, till death do you part. That means her body is fair game. Sheesh. Well, no movie night is complete without found footage, and luckily, we've been able to get our hands on this never-before-seen raw footage that a YouTuber recorded but never uploaded. Hey teddy bears, it's your old pal Teddy, and I am so excited that I get to announce a huge milestone for this channel. What's the milestone, Teddy? Well, I'll tell you that. Why, why is my voice? <laughs> well, I'll tell you guys. 50,000 subscribers, that's right. My channel has blown up since that court case, and I oh, can't yeah, yeah. thank each and every one of you enough. I love you. Yes? Yes, you. Don't tell the others. You're my favorite. <laughs> Alright? Dance, set, and break. <laughs> As you might remember, I've been asking you all to send in questions through uh, Twitter, on Insta, through Carrier Pigeon, and we were going to do a huge live AMA, and it was going to be everything! Um, but then, because life happened, my internet crapped out yesterday, so that was pretty sweet. Um, also, the AC. Also, the heater. It's hot, it's cold. Um, basically, my house is turning to ashes and crumbling down around me. So, that's pretty sweet. Um, also, don't know if you can hear, but the neighbor's dog um, is possessed and is barking non-stop. So, sleep has been not a thing. But who needs it? Who needs it? So what we're going to do, instead of crying about no internet and not celebrating 50,000 subscribers, we are persevering. We are persevering. We're going to shoot this video and edit out all the clunky stuff like me talking about the editing. <laughs> we're going to shoot this video and then I'm going to drive on over to Joni's house because her house does not hate her and still has the internet and upload the... so you are watching the future and you don't care about how the sausage is made, do ya? Yeah, 
size of eyes and his cheekbones. Cheekbones for days. Alright. Um, I'm also going to touch on another big announcement. And it's going to be a little shady. A little bit of shade. So, we're going to get under our umbrella. <laughs> um, I never thought when I started this, you know, I'm going to go out to the garage, I'm going to sit on my lawnmower, and I'm going to talk about life and love and politics and pop culture, that it would blow up. You know, I, yes, I had about... 200 subscribers um, before the whole Sylvester Griffin of it all happened, and then I just blew up. So, uh, long story short, most of you have been following this, Sylvester Griffin was my hot drummer neighbor. And by hot drummer, I mean like all, all drummers are hot. Right, but usually with like a face, a magical face, and like a little bit of danger. Um, so that was him, him in a nutshell. And he slaughtered our two neighbor girls, yeah. and they arrested him, you know, covered in blood, and they asked me to testify. You know what? Yeah. What I heard, um, you know, I I heard drumming late at night coming from their house. You know, it doesn't take more than one plus drum equals the drummer did it. He done did it. And yes, it's this whole, you know, free Sylvester movement. Uh, you know, all the groupies and everything. And it's just like, you know, grow up. Spend time doing something more productive. Right? The whole thing can be put to bed because, like, you know, hello, if he was innocent, why did he kill himself in jail last week? You know, innocent people don't do that. So, the whole thing is pretty much over now, and that's the last thing that I would say on my channel about Sylvester Griffin. Pretty good drummer. Murder two girls. If you do want more information, I have been in touch with a few book publishers and an agent or two and they want to hear my story and we're going to write it down we're going to do a big launch um they're projecting some pretty good sales pretty good sales out of it um it's going to be the real key who he was and how he brutally brutally murdered those two sweet innocent cherubs um, more on that soon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Done. We're going to get into the whole AMA of it all, and it's going to be the... And that is the house alarm. That is the house alarm because my house beats me. God damn it. I can't do one thing. One thing. One video. For one, one time. And locked out. Sorry, okay? 
I didn't, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't exaggerate it. All of, all of us was a, ah, ah. Bless you. please, man. Looks like Teddy learned the hard way not to exaggerate for attention. Couldn't have happened to a nicer cloud chaser. I do wish he had made it out alive though, because I, I'd really like to ask him where he got that sweater. You know, I would just use my Ouija board to talk to him, but we get terrible reception in this apartment, you know. We've been having a lot of trouble lately with our paranormal connectivity. And now an animated short called Expectant Emo about a lonely teenager who just can't catch a break. Where are my keys? Oh, there they are. What about my hat? 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 My hat? Oh right, I, I don't wear hats anymore. Let's see, uh, reading glasses, check, wallet, passport, lucky silver dollar, Condoms. Good to go. Robin! Yeah? I'm heading out. Can you come here for a minute? Isn't tonight your school dance? So? So? I thought you were going to ask out one of the Doyle twins. I tried both of them. And how'd that go? Jessica, would you consider being my date to the spring formal? Like, screw off, homo. Are you sure? Nobody likes you. Thank you for the feedback. Jackson, would you consider being my date to the spring formal? Just screw off, reader. Are you sure? Nobody likes you. Duly noted. Better than the last time, that focus group really helped. <sighs> well, keep workshopping it. You're a sweet young boy, someone will see that eventually. Or not. Do I need to call Dr. Fuller? You know your mental health is important. Just because I wear black and no one likes me or ever will doesn't mean I'm depressed. You're a terrible salesman. I learned it from you, Dad. Touché. So the conference goes until Sunday afternoon and I won't be back until late. You're going to be good here all weekend, right? You're not going to waste it watching some Eurosleeves bisex porn like the 4th of July weekend, right? I got so dehydrated. Anyway, I'm going to do a BoJack Horseman rewatch while I write two papers. Very busy stuff. You're not having anyone over? If I had any friends, they'd all be at the dance tonight and hung over tomorrow. Breaks my heart to hear you talk like that, but at least I don't have to worry about bad influences or becoming a hip, cool grandfather at 40, so I guess I'll consider it a win. Have a nice weekend. I need your help. My, my car broke down and I think there's some dangerous thing out there in the fields. Did you see it? Just a silhouette. I, I think it broke my tires. I'll call the police. Come in. Oh, thank you. It's dead. Was it ever alive? Funny. There's no signal. Maybe the thing won't look for me here. I hope not. Maybe your phone will work in a few hours. I hope so. Can I use your washroom? Okay, it's... I'll be right back. Huh. Do you see it? No. Do you smell it? Smell what? It's pungent. You're alone out here. You're here. Yes. And something dangerous is out there. Yes.
You play the guitar? A uh, little. Um, what music do you listen to? The normal type yourself. I'm kind of into Steam Button and the Valentine Whores. They're early stuff mostly. <laughs> You're funny. I'm pretty sure I'm not. Do you think the dangerous thing can get in here? I'm pretty sure it can't. You're great for letting me hide here. I can't thank you enough. It's cool. Where are you from? Canada. Let's watch television and relax. Mon Dieu, oh. je ne voulais pas interrompre ton amour, oh. mais non, oh. ne vous arrêtez pas. Oh. Oui, je vous rejoindre? Nope. What was that? I just like foreign films is all, but when I'm alone... You're alone so much, Robin. You're the loneliest young man in the entire Tri-County area. You marinate in your lonely stew. Okay, well, that's a super strange thing to say. You're funny. I'm really not. Come here, lonely boy. Um, black shirts are kind of my armor. I penetrate armor. I penetrate everything. Ah! <laughs> Relax, you're mine now. My eggs are taking seed deep within your stomach organs. You will breed the next generation. And if you survive, you will breed the one after that. <laughs> Come to mommy. Robin, where are you, my little human baby vessel? Uh, I, I can smell you! Oh. Uh. Ah. Ah. Our babies will have such sad brown eyes. The oh, fuck of oh God! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Hey son, I'm home. You wouldn't believe my weekend. There were jello shots. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Wild. So how'd your weekend go? Pretty fucking bad, Dad. Can you please make an appointment with Dr. Fuller? Better make that appointment for two. Two o'clock? The two of us. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? The rent's unpaid, dear, we haven't a bus, but smiles were made, dear, for people like us in the winter. In the summer, don't we have fun? Times are bumming, getting bummer. Still, we have fun. There's nothing surer. The rich get rich, and the poor get children. In the meantime, in between time, ain't we have fun? Landlords madden. Getting madder, ain't we got fun? Times are bad and getting badder, still we have fun. There's nothing sure, the rich get rich and the poor get laid off. In the meantime, in between time, ain't we have fun? Oh, to be young and in love.
I remember the first time I was impregnated by a shape-shifting tentacle monster. Child Protective Services may have removed that baby from my home, but they can never remove the memories. Especially the one of him ripping my cat limb from limb and devouring its flesh. <sighs> um, unrelated question, does anyone know any good therapist in the area? Up next is Haunted Sites, which takes a peek at what it's like to be a magazine editor. Hey Trip, I rejected six applicants, but thought you'd want to check this one out. She's local and a huge fan of the magazine and podcast. I'm attaching your article submission. Honestly, it's not the best submission we've received, but there's something about her. She could make a great replacement for Elsa, not that anyone could fill her shoes. Anyway, I told Rebecca I was forwarding everything to you, so it's your call. Let me know if you need anything else. Like most of my fellow Haunted Sites fans, I was floored by the news that writer and podcaster Elsa Stevens went missing. This is a sensitive matter for everyone here, so we'd like to shy away from mentioning Ms. Stevens for her family's sake. I'm sure you understand. I was lucky enough to chat with Elsa a few times at the Boston PodCon, and I can testify what a great person she is. I could think of no better way to honor her than to continue her work. In our last talk, Elsa told me she was planning to investigate the Harris Homestead, a long-abandoned farm with a companion. While it's been six months, Miss Stevens' disappearance is still an ongoing mystery, and so we don't want to print anything that may hinder the police investigation. Besides, we've all heard the rumors she was seeing someone, but there's no validity to those claims, although I applaud any writer who puts in such research. The Harris Homestead was a successful farm running the Berkshires of western Massachusetts. Quentin Harris built the farm and started a family on the land in the 1920s. He lost one son to illness and another died fighting the Nazis. Grief-stricken, Quentin shot himself in the mid-1940s. His wife hanged herself thereafter. Both suicides occurred on the premises. Quentin's daughter Imelda inherited the property and hired a bartender to manage the farm. The farm thrived until 1962. Imelda caught the property manager embezzling and promptly shot him in the face with a rifle. She may have gotten away with it, but two of her farmhands caught her midway through burying the body behind barn. The land was foreclosed upon and bought by a neighboring farmer in 1964. Shortly thereafter, he was the victim of a home invasion. Burglars robbed the homestead and shot and killed the homeowner and his wife. The homestead was bought at a steal in 1968 by a young man from out of state, but the crops died and the farmer went bankrupt in only two years. The Harris homestead has sat virtually untouched since 1970 and is the subject of supernatural lore concerning strange sights and sounds. Locals refuse to venture into the property, claiming ill fortune clings to whomever steps foot on the old farm. Unsubstantiated rumors swirled around the farmland throughout the late 1980s during the Satanic Panic. Police were called out to investigate numerous times, but they only ever found vagrants and animal bones. Thankfully, the Harris Homestead has sat quiet for several years, and so it's not guarded or even patrolled. Strictly speaking, it's not open to the public. But it is easy enough to reach by parking two miles away at a small bus stop and hiking through the woods. It's a treacherous off-path route, but well worth the risk. Although I nearly fell in a sinkhole, <laughs> it makes you wonder what mysteries could be long buried out there. I'd rephrase. We try not to convey pure conjecture, lest we risk misleading the reader into believing there could be a body buried somewhere on that vast property. Today, the Harris Homestead is in desperate need of some tender love and care. The barn stands at a rigid 45 degrees, and the house proper doesn't look much better. Windows have long been shattered, and the grass has crept past the open entrance. I remembered to ask for permission to enter from the spirits that may still be lingering, just as Elsa described in her many articles. 
If you decide to write future articles, you'd be a new writer to the magazine, and as such, you shouldn't feel beholden to follow every one of Elsa's irritating idiosyncrasies like asking empty rooms for permission to enter or claiming to be a clean freak yet refusing to rinse off the dishes before placing them in the dishwasher. It's a quick enough chore that results in a more effective wash, yet some people can't grasp that simple fact. The Harris homestead reeks of animal feces and mold. If anyone from the city should ever venture there, I'm sure it would immediately be condemned and bulldozed. It's near impossible to wipe away the years of decay and picture the farm in its heyday. It was built to sustain a family, but it's only seen death. I toured the first floor, extremely slow and careful, to avoid debris of all sorts, but I did not dare venture upstairs. The stairs looked like they would buckle with a strong enough breeze. Unfortunately, I found no evidence of anything supernatural on the premises. Not that I expected a neon sign pointing to a floating man in a bedsheet. The place is creepy, especially in the dark, but my amateur recordings, audio and visual, found nothing unusual. Still, this was only one night's investigation, and I can't rule out a return trip. Perhaps during an eclipse, or on Halloween night, for a higher chance of spotting any paranormal happenings. I'd like to return with several friends to further investigate and attempt a seance. There's absolutely no need for that, since we're not accepting this article. Evidence aside, there is a certain off feeling throughout the premises. It doesn't feel like the tragedies that occurred there are decades old. Through the dancing shadows, I could see fresh murders taking place. It's funny though, as I left, I could almost feel Elsa Stevens looking over my shoulder. I'd like to think that meant she would have approved of me continuing her work. Yes, of course, I'm sure that's what it meant. There couldn't be any other possible explanation as to why you felt Elsa's presence out there. Dear Rebecca, while you demonstrate clear writing skills, I hope you'll understand my reasoning for not accepting this submission. The Harris home said is simply not interesting enough and I'd hate for any of our readers to waste their time snooping around. Since your writing shows promise and you live in the Boston area, I was hoping we could meet to discuss future articles. I'm in Brighton, 606 North Road to be exact. I can make myself available at your convenience, but I'm going out of town next week so the sooner the better. This weekend would be ideal. Looking forward to hearing from you. Trip Gamble, Editor-in-Chief, Haunted Sites Magazine. That's so exciting to hear from you. The few times I met Elsa, she always spoke so highly of you. I'm actually free this afternoon. I'd love to drop by for a visit. Morning, I can be a bit of a chatterbox. So have some tea ready. There's so much we have to discuss. Happy Leap Year Day. I just finished editing Elsa's last podcast. I added a link at the end to the tip line. She'd want us to keep working, right? It just feels weird now. Anyway, here's the episode. I won't schedule it until you give the go-ahead. Welcome to the Haunted Sites Podcast, a weekly series that explores those places touched by the dead. I'm your host, Elsa. And I'm so happy to spend the next hour getting spooky with you. Welcome back, loyal listeners and new friends alike. Ratings, reviews, shares, and likes for this humble podcast have risen in the last few weeks, so I want to thank every one of you who takes a minute of your time to share the love. As much as my black heart appreciates it, I want to take a moment to remind listeners to be safe out there. As our ghost hunting family grows, it's important to watch out for yourselves. Otherwise, you'll add to some haunted location's mystique, and we wouldn't want that. The abandoned and forgotten places we venture out to are often full of real-life dangers. Wild animals, crumbling stairs, mold. You never want to go out on an investigation alone. That's a gamble I'd never take. Call me superstitious, but besides my first aid bag, I always bring Leslie with me. Allow me a short trip down memory lane. I went to my first haunted site at 15 when I went to my uncle's house for Thanksgiving. My three cousins and I snuck out to an old schoolhouse in upstate New York. It was falling down and full of trash. Behind the schoolhouse, there was this crumbling graveyard that hadn't been used much since the 1920s. 
We used a Ouija board like idiots and scared ourselves, contacting someone killed a long time ago. And that's when I found an old Flapper Girl doll sitting on a headstone. We joked around with her for a little while and then set her back on her tombstone. The next morning, one of my cousins found the doll in her closet. We all swore up and down that we left her at the graveyard. What? But my cousins were too spooked and made me take the doll home. For a solid week, I dreamt that she belonged to a boy you? who dreamed of being a showgirl. He named her Leslie and took her everywhere until he was sent overseas to die fighting Nazis in the arms of his lover. Proof. That's an odd little concept for so many of those who say nay. What's proof positive of the paranormal to some who wouldn't convince others? I have a lot of respect for Houdini, one of the original paranormal investigators. He and his wife created a secret password. Whoever would die first would use it if they were contacted from beyond the grave. They told no one. It's a romantic story, isn't it? I have a past phrase of my own with a special friend. And no, I won't give any guesses. That's enough out of you. Front door. So long, Leslie. Who's there? Rebecca? Rebecca? Gamble killed what? Trip killed. Who's there? Me trash. Pass phrase trash. Are killed. Trip. Killed. Bag. No. This pass phrase. Shut up. Bag. Me. Gamble. Shut up. Me. Zarg. No. Trip. Killed. Zarg. Pass phrase. Was no. Trip. Gamble. Killed. Me. Zarg. Pass phrase. Was trash. Bag. Oh God, no. Trash. Bag.
Ugh. Well, everyone, this was supposed to be the segment where we interviewed our special guest, but my producer, Jerry, blew it! We were supposed to sit down and talk to LGBTQ icon, The Babadook, about his plans for Pride this year, but we couldn't book him due to the coronavirus. Ah, man, I knew eating that bat in Wuhan would come back and screw me over eventually. Speaking of the coronavirus, our next film, All Together Alone, was filmed entirely during quarantine. Precious Romeo, I'm gonna be housebound just like you. Our governor's making me stay in because of that nasty old virus. This quarantine is a perfect time for me to master the guitar. I could do this. Let's see. This is this is A. Oh, that needs some work. Let's try G. G might be easier. Oh, there we go. This isn't going to be hard. Coronavirus outbreak, a global pandemic. In response... There's my cute little April Fool. Okay, Romeo, I'm moving on to D. Oh, that one's harder. Oh, I'll go back to G. G, I got. The CARES Act represents the third phase in Congress's response to this pandemic. The first wave of stimulus checks has been mailed to qualifying Americans who filed their 2018 or 2019 taxes. I am so glad quarantine is finally over. Thank you all for coming to visit me. It's good to see people again. Of course, it's important to touch base with one another. Thank you for coming over, local TV news anchor, whose name I just can't remember right now. It's on the tip of your tongue. Elaine, let's hear from your first guest, your niece, Nikki. Hey! Nikki, you look so good. What's new? How did you survive the quarantine? That? I feel like it's been forever. So you remember that guy my coworker set me up with? Well, we hit it off and we eloped. I didn't even know I was pregnant until after we got back from the honeymoon. That's so exciting. And so fast. What do you do? Oh, I already had the baby. Little Twilight Bean. Do you want to meet them? You did? Yeah, yes. Hey, what's up, great auntie? You're, you're my niece's son? You got it. You've been in quarantine, like, a long time, lady. And I owe probably, like, 20 large in student debt. And now, a few words from your companion, Romeo. Thanks for having me. Romeo, you can speak? Oh, sure. I learned watching HBO. But we don't get HBO.
You don't. But you leave your credit card lying around. I'm going to use it to get HBO. I mean, come on. Meow. Romeo, what would you like to say to Elaine? I find you a bit much. I'm, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. Meow. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. And now, our very own Becky Carradine with the weather. Thanks. It looks like we're in for a long spell of exactly 77 degrees. Because that's what the air conditioner is set to. You can't go outside or you'll die. So it's always going to be 77. There is no escape. This is life now. Yeah. Thanks, Becky. In conclusion, Elaine, you've missed everything, and everyone has forgotten about you. Back to you. The question remains, what phase four will entail? Democratic and Republican leaders have signaled that another stimulus package is needed, but the... It's not fun at all. I don't know why people think this thing is fun. This is not fun. This sucks. Wow, just wow. Yeah, I tell you, that sloth is a damn fine actor. He's actually got some Oscar buzz over this role. Yeah, rumor has it he could be being nominated for Best Supporting Sloth. <laughs> and also, as it happens, Best Sound Mixing. <laughs> Who knew he was the sloth of so many talents? Well, our next film is the classic 1922 silent German film, In Grazitu, based on a Victorian novella about classy British cousins planning a party.
to do was give Oscar head and then the leech monster took hers. <laughs> oh well, leech monsters are gonna do what leech monsters are gonna do, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know my ex-wife sure does. <laughs> because she also happens to be a giant leech monster. Deborah, if you're watching this, I still love you and I miss you. Please take me back. Um, <clears throat> well, there's only one more movie to show you guys tonight. <sighs> Oh, I know. It's called New Neighbors, and it reminds us that you can choose where you live, but you can't choose who lives next door. Hello. I just moved in next door. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. I'm Bridget. I'd shake her hand, but I don't want to. That's okay. Are you a germaphobe? Okay. You have a phone call. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. You have a... He'll call back. They always do. Was there a reason you came over? Oh yeah. My grandmother just called. She got my address wrong and she sent a box to your house. What's in the box? Socks. There's socks in the box? She's worried about my circulation. She sounds sweet. She's not. It's such a big house. Are you alone? I hope so. My wife is dead. We've had power failures with these crazy winds. They need to increase the grid with so many people moving to the area. Gentrification, right? Sure. How long have you lived here? That reminds me. I need to get a new alarm. Can't rely on safety with these rolling blackouts. You should update your system, too. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get back to unpacking now. I'll be on the lookout for your soft spots. Trevor! Trevor! I met the new neighbor. She seems so nice. She asked about you. I don't trust her. You have a phone call. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. 
You have a phone call. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. You have a phone call. Ring. Hey, how is that? I'll call you back. Uh, okie dokie. Be safe, bitch. Colin Ryan, Colin Ryan, Colin. Hey, so I don't understand. Your new place doesn't have power? I just met the new neighbor. He said there is rolling blackouts or some bullshit. Ha, you're already checking out your neighbor? He's a freak job. You love freaks. That's different. Different how? He can't be any worse than that dude who had you lick stamps and stick them on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> You're an ass. But get this, he straight up told me his house alarm doesn't work. Fucking moron. He actually told the stranger that. Sure, we're neighbors. Look, you know my situation. I owe Quinn five grand. God help me. I'm not saying it's your fault, but it's kind of your fault. So I could use your help, you know, paying it off and not dying. You think your freak job neighbor's house would make a decent score? I'm getting good vibes from it. Next power outage, I'll play lookout and you can grab whatever you want. Well, there goes the fucking neighborhood. I gotta get to bed. I have court in the morning. Good night, sister dearest. Later, bro. Alarm set. Alarm set. Trevor? This is your alarm. Wake up. Wake up. This is your alarm. Wake up. Wake up.
So Trevor served up some delicious looking blonde hair and paired it with a rich Merlot. Hmm, how classy. You know, I thought that meal looked so scrumptious, I just had to whip up a plate for myself, and uh, I tell you, I cannot get enough of this stuff. Mm. Ah! Oh, you know what that sound means. Unfortunately, our show has come to an end. Aww. <laughs> well, we've had a lot of fun tonight, but uh, before I go, I want to leave you all with a very important message about childhood obesity. Make sure you're fattening up those kids, because the chubbier they are, the yummier they are. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Corpsey's Cheap Chillers, everybody. Sweet dreams. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Good night, everyone. Good night. You're looking for a thriller. Looking for a fright. Then watch Corpsey's Cheap Chillers every Saturday night. Corpsey's, oh yeah. Cheap, yeah, chillers. Corpsey's, oh yeah. Cheap, yeah, chillers. Camp comedy cartoons and bad dreams. Found footage and psycho screams. All of this and more will fill your screens. Corpsey's, oh yeah. Cheap, yeah, chillers. Oh yeah, chillers. Ghosts, aliens, dolls, and killers. You'll find them all here on Corpsey's Cheap Chillers. Corpsey's, ooh yeah. Cheap, yeah, chillers. Corpsey's, ooh yeah. Cheap, yeah, chillers.